This Dubs and Lakers series has been a UFC cage match, only we're in the second round of the NBA playoffs. We saw the Lakers throw in the towel after Game 2 getting beat down in the Bay. Conversely, it was the Warriors throwing in the towel in Game 3. Saturday night's main event featured the beastly, perfectly balanced trio on and off the court of LeBron, D'Lo, and the Brow. Monopolize outright authority of this potential seven game thriller with a championship like feel to it. Stay tuned to see what made this game unpredictable early and how it turned into a blowout. Before that, just 12.1% of my audience is subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter. LeBron was being passive early, not recording a field goal until the 520 mark of the second quarter. His drives just weren't scaring the Warriors, at least early, as Golden State was doing a good job at forcing him to be a passer. All of a sudden, he sprinted back to impact a missed layup with a patented chase down and near block, before sprinting up to glide to the corner where he'd knock down the triple. Then, coming out of the locker room, he pulled off a whirling dervish down the lane, sprinted back down the court for the block, before surging down the lane yet again to draw a couple charity stripe attempts. He also had a play where he came almost out of nowhere like Randy Orton to stop a warrior fast break by deflecting a pass and nearly saving it from going out of bounds. The stamina at nearly 40 is special. Hey, before I go, how old LeBron is? Anybody know how old LeBron is? Oh, okay. I I thought somebody would know. My fault. To be fair, James was doing a good job of getting AD going early despite some evident passiveness, but when the Akron-born assassin started hurtling over the chairs, we knew the Warriors were in trouble. In what seemingly took place days before the final result, a clean 30-point Lakers blowout win, this was a bout which saw exchanging blows from each side. LA led by 7 early in the first quarter, but by the end of the first, they were down by 7. Right off the bat, it was D'Angelo Russell putting the team on his back. D'Lo was picking his spots efficiently, sifting into the lane with an array of shifty dribble combos, hezzies, and patented off-balance drifting back runners. D-loading was breaking the hearts of Dub Nation with back-breaking bombs from beyond the arc, possession after the next finishing with 5 triples and 21 points which all came in the first half. D'Lo drained the Lakers' first 3 triples, their first 11 points, and 13 of their first 17. The Lakers need D'Angelo to keep up his aggressiveness and confidence in what'll be an equally important Game 4 to fully defend home court. On the other side for Golden State, Clay and Wiggs were carrying the dubs early, as Thompson had 11 quick first quarter points, and by the early second, Wiggs had 9. Shout out my fellow Torontonian and Wiggs who threw down a vicious hammer on AD. After their late first quarter spurt, the Warriors had seemed to take full control of this game, going up 40-29. However, a 13-0 Laker run would ensue after that, and capped off by a buzzer-beating attack from Davis, the Lakers ended the first half on a mind-boggling 30-8 run. In terms of the Laker coaching adjustments, they consisted of firstly making it a point of emphasis to push the pace, succeeding by turning the Warriors over 10 times before the first half was over, and 19 turnovers for the game. Secondly, on defense, LA wasn't just much quicker to get back in transition themselves, but they changed up the rotation. Defensively, they switched Vando onto Draymond and had Reeves guarding Curry instead. That different look was provably a success when you take in that AR-15 was a game-high plus 31, while Curry was a minus 26 and shot 9 for 21 from the field. Not only did Reeves make it a tough night on Steph with his defense, but Steph was also guarding him, and there was a possession where he grabbed an offensive board over Curry and hit a shot in his grill directly after that. Whether Reeves was hitting or not though, the man was making Steph work defensively, which likely wore Curry down. We've still yet to see AR-15 break out onto the scene like he was playing in the Memphis series in this Golden State series quite yet, but once he does, the Laker offense becomes that much more deadly. Third and final adjustment was giving Lonnie Walker II some run, as the utility guys stayed ready after being out of the regular unit for such a prolonged stretch. 
the Skywalker gave Darwin a concrete 24 minutes of playing time, posting 12 points, 2 steals, and a block to go along with 4 rebounds, while the Lakers outscored Golden State by 10 when he graced the court. Game 3 at the Crypt, however, was mostly headlined by the fact that it was AD's perfect somewhere on both ends of the court, but most predominantly on defense, where he insulated the restricted area with four blocks, two of which came on consecutive possessions, one against Draymond and the next against Moody. We'll go over sequences like that in tomorrow's film breakdown, but even offensively, Davis was proving doubters like your boy D. Flo wrong, who said his performance in the previous game was really terrible, but what maybe motivated AD even more so was the fact that Kendrick Perkins would give him a player comparison of Kendrick Perkins. How in the hell do Anthony Davis go from looking like the best player in the world in game one to game two looking like Kendrick Perkins? To be fair, AD may just not have been sleeping well at whatever hotel he was at on the road in Golden State, at least leading up into game two, Perhaps he should have stayed at a place he found at Hotels.com. I mean, he needs his beauty sleep, right? AD's like, <laughs> and he wakes up and drops 50. Just like, boom, 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 boom for 300. Too many points. Oh, it's too many points. But look, man, we got the big beds, we got the big towels. We got the big robes. For the big man. This right here, this is AD's perfect somewhere. Nevertheless, Davis responded to a wide variety of backlash after his dreary performance in game two. I'm not playing games today. Anthony Davis was straight garbage last night. Let's just call it what it is. Straight garbage, okay? I mean, he was so bad, sanitation workers might not want to go near him, and that's their job. Davis would rack up 25 points on 81% true shooting to go along with a basketball fantasy player's dream line of three steals, three dimes, four blocks, and 13 boards. Confusing part is, from one game to the next, AD has been definitively inconsistent. Back from game one of the first round, he had 22 in the playoff opener, just 13 the next game, then back up to 31, but back down to 12, then back up to 31 and down to 16, then back up to 30 and down to 11, which leads us into the here and now, the aforementioned Monster 25 piece in game three. My boy AD can't be really terrible again and expect his team to get a W, He's got to perform like the number one scoring option and overall complimentary beast for Lanier 40 year old that he's developed into yet again for game four. How can we forget about LeBron Raymond James Sr. who bounced back after being a minus 27 in game two by being a plus 26 in game three. While Bronny Sr. still has some evening out to do in terms of his plus minus over the last couple outings, the year 20 resembled the rookie in terms of the freshness in his legs, at least later on in the game. So showing up five hours early to find a rhythmic flow and shoot around seemed to have paid off. We'll see what mindset and game plan he and the Lakers bring to the table on Monday. Lakers will need another impactful performance like we saw on Saturday from Braun. For LeBron personally, as he mentioned in his post-game interviews, for the real Bronny and LeBron James Jr., this was one of the best days of his life, with his oldest son committing to the University of Southern California. Tomorrow, we'll break down film on this Lake Show W, but from a narrative standpoint, how James and Davis have meshed personality-wise as a duo to maintain both their chemistry as a one-two punch and the chemistry of the team all season and really throughout their entire four-year run together continues to be a sight to behold. AD's a lot more to himself and a leader by example more often than not, whereas LeBron's much more vocal and confrontational despite their drastically different approaches and personas. How they've gotten along to lead the Lakers to where they are, plus of course to a championship back in 2020, shouldn't be taken for granted. Like any good pairing, they sacrifice a little bit of themselves and allow one another's best qualities to have an impact on them which is gratifying to watch for basketball fans across the globe. Trade deadline acquisition, now bona fide third option in D'Angelo Russell, has been the perfect complement to this generational duo, both personality-wise with his exuberance and spacing-wise with his shooting ability.